This is a brand new SRAM Eagle Access electronic group set. We knew it was coming. We've seen spy shots on the internet for the last year or so with Nino Shirta putting it through its paces at World Cup races. So it's not the biggest surprise we knew it was coming. But this is the first time we've been able to see it in the flesh. So they're basically taking the same tried and tested electronic gear changing technology from their ETAP road bike group set, which has been used at the highest level of sport for the last few years with quite a lot of success and proven to be rear reliable and durable as well. They've got the same battery on the back of the rear mech, got the same motors as well, which are improved over the previous ETAP, so faster and more accurate shifting. The big news is, well, a couple of things actually. So you've got access or AXS, and this is all about this kind of an ecosystem of connected devices. Wherever you see the access logo on the component, you can connect it to another access component. So as you can see, there's now an electronic reverb drop post, and it also has the access logo on it. So you can connect the two components to the rest of the group set, and you have an app now which allows you to personalize and customize how all these components work and how you interact with them and how you control them as well. So it's all about connecting these different components via electronics together to create this uh, seamless group set, this ecosystem of components. And for the very first time, although it probably won't apply to mountain bikers so much, it's the fact that you can mix and match road and mountain bike components. So you can slap this Eagle rear mech and cassette onto a gravel bike with drop bar shifters and sync it all together. And you've not been able to do that with any conventional previous group set. People have been doing their own sort of um, hack together hybrid system, but now SRAM is making it really easy to, um, to mesh these different components together using this access uh, technology to just seamlessly connect them all together. So you've got electronics on the rear mech. You've basically got the same Eagle technology with a wide range 1050 cassette and a familiar looking rear mech with a battery on the back. The battery is removable and you also have a reverb electronic drop a post as well and that uses the same technology so the same battery and the batteries are interchangeable so say if you're out riding and the battery dies on your rear mech you can simply take the battery out of the drop post and slap it in there and if you're doing some epic uh, long rides or multi day rides in the back of nowhere you could take a spare battery because it's small and you can easily clip it out and take a spare battery with you in your hydration pack as well although the battery life on these is pretty uh, significant as well so you have to go some way before you run one of these flat. Now the big question you might be asking like why do I need electronics on my mountain bike you know the cables work just fine and that's a good point. The one key benefit of going wireless is cable routing so especially with full suspension bikes like this Specialized Epic getting the cables routing down the frame and around the main pivot down to the rear mech and providing a smooth um, kinkless uh, cable routing is really difficult and it's something that bike designers spend loads of time and agonize over providing really smooth cable routing. By going wireless you basically remove that so there are potential for bike designers to redesign and maximize the frame design because they don't have to accommodate a cable route down the down tube and through the main pivot and this area is really tricky to get a cable to route through and it also removes a component which in the UK where it's really muddy and wet all the time that does need a lot of servicing. You have to uh, maintain your cables to provide that smooth um, shot floor quality shifting you want all the time. But by taking that cable away, you remove, well, you remove something you have to maintain for a start. So one less thing to have to worry about when you're cleaning and servicing your bike. And it's just one less thing to go wrong. And I know a lot of people might be afraid of electronics, there's something that go wrong, but a cable can go wrong. It can um, degrade in quality really quickly and get uh, clogged up with mud and just stop shifting halfway through a ride. And I've had that happen as well. So that is a key benefit of electronics. And it's the same deal with the electronic reverb drop post as well. Because there's no hose inside the frame, you don't have to worry about routing the hose. And that's good for bike designers because they don't have to accommodate that hose routing anymore. And it's also good for bike builders, whether in a factory in Taiwan where they build loads of bikes or you're doing it at home yourself, you don't have to worry about getting the hose through the frame because it's just a, a separate unit. Just take it out, put it in, easy. There are other benefits as well. So you have two bikes, one drop post, you could uh, swap the post from one bike to another. Or on a XC race bike like this one, if you're doing a course which doesn't need a drop post and you want to save a bit of weight, take a seat post out and then put a normal seat post in. Two minutes work and you have um, you know, rigid seat post or drop post depending on your requirements um, and your needs. So that is a, another benefit. So just sum up, no hose routing, no cable routing with either of the components. 
potential benefits for frame designers, which we haven't seen yet, but we might see in the future when they get their hands on this new group set and really um, enhance the design of the frame around these new group sets. I think there is potential to do some exciting things. With a new electronic rear mech and drop post, you clearly need a new way to control and interact with these devices. So let's have a look at the handlebars and see what's going on there. So clearly with a new electronic rear mech and an electronic drop post, you need a new shifting design to control and interact with these devices. And it's probably the biggest part of the new group set we weren't clear on. The pictures we have seen over the past year weren't that clear on how SRAM had developed new shifters. But now, it's all been revealed and we can see what SRAM has done. And it's quite simple and quite elegant. So you basically have a rocker paddle switch for shifting up and shifting down. Very simple, very easy. Works really well. The shape of it means your thumb just sits into it nicely. It doesn't take much force, very light action as well and you have nice tactile feedback and you also have that sound, which is a bit louder than ETAC road and that's deliberate just to give a bit more um, audible uh, notice that you have changed gear and it works really nicely. And you can change how the paddles work in terms of which one goes up and which one goes down using the app as well. So as I mentioned, you can personalize the shifting to suit your needs and personal tastes. And on the other side, it's a similar design, a bit different. It's a single paddle for the drop post. And you press it and the drop post comes up. Very simple, doesn't take much force, quite light action. So it only takes a lighter touch to um, push your saddle back to its original position. And um, yeah, it works nicely. So overall, I'm really impressed with what SRAM has done with its first electronic mountain bike group set. Now, I know electronic group sets on mountain bikes won't be for everyone. Uh, Shimano has tried with limited success. But I think there are definitely benefits to a wireless electronic group set. As I mentioned, there's no cable routing issues at all and there's no cable to maintain. And in the UK, where the winters are really hard on bikes, uh, that one less thing to maintain, one less thing to go wrong and fail is a really key benefit as well. I'm also impressed with the shifters that SRAM have come up with. They work really nicely. I've had spin around the trails here in Tucson at the worldwide launch of the group set and they work really well, really intuitive. You don't have to rewire your brain to how they work. Your thumb just falls to place really nicely. There's a nice bit of audible feedback as well. And the shifting is really fast and really accurate as well. And I haven't missed a shift yet. But long-term testing will be the real test of a new group set, particularly in the UK, where, as I mentioned, winters are really hard on bikes. So getting this group set uh, covered in UK filth and mud will be the ultimate test for it. So in terms of durability and just shifting under duress when it's covered in mud and other crap. But there are definitely benefits to SRAM's Eagle Access group set. I think there's some exciting potential here and I can't wait to get out on the trails in the UK and put it through its paces. So that's been a quick first look at a brand new SRAM Eagle Access group set, all new for 2019 and available now in the shops. I can't wait to get my hands on a group set back home in the UK to really put it through its paces on my local trails. Some exciting capabilities here and I can't wait to really put it through its paces. But it's time to head home now. I've got a flight to catch. So while I do that, let me know if you have any questions about the group set. Is it a thumbs up, a thumbs down? First impressions, let me know in the comment section below what you think about SRAM's new Eagle electronic group set as well. And a broader question, do you think electronic group sets are going to be the future of mountain bikes as they are proven to be in the road market or a uh, dead end alley? Let me know what you think about electronic group sets on mountain bikes. But that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. And don't forget to like this video if you did enjoy watching it. And I hope you did. And subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future reviews and first looks at the latest mountain bike tech. But that's all for now. I'll see you all again next time.